in some ways, this kind of is the first show. How so? Um, well, well, production for yeah. one. We've been, we've been kind of downsizing the operation to play a handful of places before getting here. So this is the first show at the full rig. Oh, nice. The PA and mm-hmm. lights and everything. And first show with bright eyes. And, and uh, uh, yeah, kind of feels like it's, it's, for, it's 0.5 first, you know? Like yeah, we, something we, like we, that, yeah. There's something that qualifies before the full mile kicks in. Yeah, this is maybe a little more of a show and a little less of a rehearsal with an audience. Oh, that's right. good. Yeah. How are you guys enjoying the road so far? What's it like to be out this time? Pretty great. Good. You yeah, I mean, it's only been a week, but still. Ask us like six weeks in. Am I yeah. Ready to start? No, it's been really, it's been really fun this time out. Uh, we've we've had a lot of time off, which makes us all hungry to be back out and play shows again. And mm-hmm. of course, playing a new record is super fun, and and uh, getting to work those songs out, sort of like a mini tour for new songs. Yeah, how are the songs coming? Because it's very keyboard. So you're playing a lot of keyboards then, Chris, I assume, live. Uh, I, I'm playing, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm juggling. Doing really? a lot of juggling. Picking mm. up multiple three and four things. I thought mm. I had to have independence, but looking over <laughs> at him now, it's, it's hands and feet uh, and brain and voice. and. It's a so. challenge. Did you consider bringing someone else chess. on the road? <laughs> Robot chess. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Um. I think we talked about it for about a half a second. And, no. and well, I think that, you know, it, it, it just seemed like we should try and figure out if we can pull it off just with, uh, um, just with the four of us and, you know, like we've always done. And it seems like, I think the answer is yes so far. So, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's probably necessary. It's sounding well for you guys, though? Like it, it works live? It was a four piece? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Cool. We haven't had to cut any corners or really make any big arrangement changes or sonic decisions like i mean largely one of the keyboards that chris brought out which is all over the record is with us and and it's so nice you know to be on stage and hear the same thing that mm-hmm. inspires you yeah. in the studio so right let's let's go through some of the songs on codes and keys because mm-hmm. it sounds like it could have been called textures and grooves too like it's all just about <laughs> construction and textures uh-huh. and it's it's yeah. we listened yesterday and it's like it's like nothing you guys have done before it's something brand textures new and grooves. textures and grooves yeah i mean it's a little different it's um this is good by the way this the brownie. pastry what is it mm-hmm. it looks like um, it's chocolate it appears to be a chocolate brownie inside of a Short a little bread. shortbread pastry shell, which is sort of a, um, I don't know what you would call this. Is maybe some, it's probably some mid Albertan specialty of some sort or another. Of course, but, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean this record is a, um, it's a, it, it, yeah. I mean the idea was not to make a record that was radically different than anything we'd ever made. The idea was just to try and incorporate some textures and build the songs from foundations and from places that maybe we'd never built songs from before Mm -hmm. and like trying to i don't think there's i was thinking about it this morning i don't think there's a single place on the record say for the last song stay young go dancing the folk song where the folk song where a guitar actually like strums through any part of a song like the guitars are all used as punctuation they're just like little lines here and there for the most part like Mm -hmm. there's no like there's no big pastoral guitar soundscapes. Like all the anything that you know that fleshes something out in harmonic terms is usually a, a synthesizer or a piano. There's a lot of random sounds. Even at the beginning of, of Tourist, I heard you were like tuning short waves or something. Oh like yeah, that. there's a there's a piece of that. I found a piece of a um, uh, I found a piece of a short wave broadcast because th- there's something that's unique to short wave. Uh, as you cycle through the bands, you end up with this. Um, there's something there's something about that uh, that frequency of transmission that allows it to get all the way across the globe. But one of the artifacts it introduces is this, is this kind of pitched warble hmm. about it. And if you just record dead air, you end up with this big long chunk of pitch. So I grab that, and that lives inside of Tourist as sort of one of the harmonic beds. That How gets, do you decide that that's the song it needs to sit on? It's well, so, it's, it's so random. Like, you can go anywhere. Well, right, yeah. But it's sort of like that was a song that just the way that we constructed that song, it ended up that that needed some harmonic heft between the bass guitar and the vocals at a certain point. Mm-hmm. So it was, and it didn't feel like it needed another part, really. It didn't, it just needed some glue. So I ended up sort of inventing some some tape loops and sort of doing, you know, doing that kind of stuff. Are you playing all acoustic kits or are there electronic kits on there too? Uh, no, 
on the on the album it's all yeah. acoustic but uh, live I have a sampler for some of these beds and colors you know that just mm -hmm. run underneath real quiet and kind of our MO for operating is or mine is like if a sampler goes down it shouldn't throw the show like we don't rely that heavily on <clears throat> on those sort of things but it's nice as we play these songs and take them out live to represent as best as we can what what went down on the record it's interesting because the drums sound different on every song. I don't know which one of you is doing that, or if it's a collaboration between a, the two of you. It's a team, right? It's it's a team it's, accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah happy, <laughs> happy team accidents. Like we, um, you know, Chris and I, I think both have a lot of trust and faith in each other and follow yeah. follow each other's noses. And I mean, like perfect example um, is uh, we went into a studio in Vancouver, BC, the warehouse, and it was, right. you know, I think the ceilings were probably 35, 40 feet high, full glass walls, beautiful, big, airy, huge sounding room, and, and we built the tiniest little cabin around my drum set where I had to, like, crawl through a space, you know, but that was <laughs> the appropriate thing for that song. What and song I, is that? It was... Um, um, portable Television? Portable Television. Yeah. Nice. And Stay Young, Go Dancing, same thing, we are in that giant room and I ended up being in more of a storage closet <laughs> yeah. that was that was full glass <laughs> with a whole bunch of cases and partitions in front of my bass room like four feet away so I mean we I think that the most refreshing thing is that I know that with every song it's generally going to be a different sound a different thing and some in the past I have brought out way too many drums but mm -hmm. I mostly relied on two of my favorite kits this time and knew that we could do environmental changes and right everything happening but it's important, I think, to to do that to address the song differently. Mm -hmm. Each one, yeah, for sure. And they certainly, speaking of different songs, "Stay Young, Go Dancing." You, you mentioned that that sits on the record. It, it fits, but it doesn't fit. And I, I think you understand yep. what I mean by yeah. that. Yeah, is exactly. that a, is that a precursor to maybe a folk record next? I hadn't really planned it that way. <laughs> I don't know. Just yeah, curious. No, no, I think you know these songs. Uh, St. Peter's Cathedral was written in 2002. Everything else was oh, written wow. between 2008 and halfway through 2010 like while we were still recording mm -hmm. so the the real broad range i think is what we can attribute to the different styles and chris wrote music for um home is a fire as well as underneath the sycamore and mm -hmm. i mean it uh we, we and going to all the different studios you know seven or eight different studios to inform different sounds and workflows and everything i mean i don't think you could take any three songs and put them out as a three song mini ep and like imagine that it's going to work out like how could these three things live together mm -hmm. but it's you know as evidenced by that last song but it's in no way i think an indication of it's not the final it's not a chapter before the next chapter right. it's not a setup of a scene mm -hmm. you mentioned st peter's cathedral in there uh you had mentioned something in an interview i read about ben using his voice as more of an instrument this time and i think it comes across really well in that song especially because of the dry vocals that you put on it like there's it sounds like there's nothing on it at all mm -hmm. is that true and the, for the St. Peter's the, Cathedral for the lead vocal, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Are you singing on there too? Do I hear uh, you somewhere in the background? No, not on. Uh, I don't sing on St. Peter. I don't think I sing it. No, I sing a little bit on Codes and Keys, but not on, um, not on that song at all. Okay. No. Yeah. No. There's a little. Uh, the the lead vocal on St. Peter's Cathedral is completely dry. There are the uh, the those ba dum ba dums that little callback thing that mm -hmm. Ben does. That's a that was definitely a, a treatment, but but yeah cool yeah you'd mentioned another like an ep is there plans for another ep like you did last time in a couple months or was there, are there any songs that are left over from the sessions uh, there might be we have to go through it i think yeah but we're, we're just focusing on this record mm -hmm. for now and mm -hmm. i mean it has it's funny we've been rehearsing since the beginning of april we've done just a handful of things and this is like i said the fourth show and the record still hasn't even come out yet right so people yeah, are don't starting to in ask the future, us, I'm sorry. no 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 i mean it's not i mean the you know, people want to know what the next single is or what, right. is there an EP, is there what's next? And we're like, hold on, we haven't even opened up right, the cover yeah, to the yeah. book yeah. yet. Right, you know, yeah. It's still, <laughs> I haven't even pulled the book off the stand, you know, it's still in the boxes. So, How does that affect the live show? Because now you're incorporating a bunch of new songs. I would assume, what, like probably six songs make, make the show? About that. Something like that? So yeah, it's what, been between four and six. Yeah, so what leaves? Show, yeah. What songs leave the arsenal for the set lists? I, I think actually the the sets we've been playing are pretty long. I think we've actually just added four <laughs> songs oh, really? to the set. Yeah, we've been playing for like two hours. Yeah, it's Maybe been like yeah, that's longer than most of the shows. Three or twenty four songs mm -hmm. a night. Crazy. And there's I think as many as five new songs each mm -hmm. night on on a big set. So what's but your favorite we, to play live out of the new ones? I really like how codes and keys has been going. Uh, but 
Some Boys has been really fun. Some Boys has been really fun. I've been enjoying Portable Television a lot. Doors Unlocked. So, I mean, so Doors Unlocked, or from the top, uh, we've been just started playing Home is a Fire, and Codes and Keys, and Some Boys, and uh, Doors Unlocked. Did I say Doors Unlocked? Doors Unlocked. Yeah. Doors Unlocked. Portable Television, Underneath the Sycamore. And Tourist. And Tourist. So, mm. that's six. Or that seven. wasn't counting, but sure, let's go with yeah. six. And, uh, yeah, so... Who knows, maybe more will surface, but I, I don't think that we did that for Narrow Stairs, and I don't think we did that for Plans either. Mm-hmm. So it's nice to have the majority of a new album that's presentable. Mm-hmm. Codes and Keys has a real 50s groove to it. Really? You don't feel that way? Considering it's mostly the drums right. that kind of to do it. I think it's sort of... Um, maybe that's in the presentation. The song, not, not the record, I should say. The, oh, yeah. the demo definitely came in that way. It and did. that was something I was kind of trying to avoid for the album, but I guess I didn't do it. Oh, you're trying <laughs> to avoid it? I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. no, no. no I, why yeah. were you trying to avoid it? Why would, you, why would you avoid something that's coming? Well, it was... It sounded to me like it could have been a bigger song than the demo. Well, I mean, hmm. that's just it. Like the demo version, which may be out there at some point in time just sounded like someone was listening to 50s music and not like someone was trying to push to right. yeah, do something it felt, a little more contemporary. It felt um, it, it, like the song was, I mean, it felt a little bit throwbacky, I guess, as a demo. Mm-hmm. And it, it was like trying to push it out of that textually was sort of the, sort of the idea, I guess, yeah. Cool. Sycamore, you guys want to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, it's it, I the whole musical part of it happened as a, I mean, it was like, I think I b- wrote the instrumental thing that Ben ended up writing the lyrics and melody around in like an hour in my basement, hmm. and it was like an hour of, I, I was supposed to be doing something else and I was procrastinating and I had an idea I wanted to get out and so I did it. Well, you, it worked. You sent yeah. it. You sent it to everybody, and yeah. I think the next morning Ben had written the lyrics. And yeah, it happened. So he was really excited about it. It happened like, really quick. Yeah, and, and then we retracted um, all of it. virtually everything for the for the album. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a perfect pop song. It's a pop song in, in a mix of all these new order, starsy kind of like synth tunes. It's cool. Right. It awesome. fits, it fits well into the. It should be a single actually. If I, I know it's not up to you. It's up to the label at the end of the day. Well, no, it's kind it's of hard. up to us. It's, it's, yeah, you have that kind of say? That's yeah, cool. absolutely. I mean, it, you know, it's also, I mean, it's pretty easy to tell these days via iTunes or Amazon or yeah, whatever numbers true. you're getting back. It's yeah. like, what's the next single? Oh, I guess that's the next single because mm-hmm. yeah. it's got the biggest bar next to it. <laughs> so sense. Unless there's a whole bunch of bars next to every song, then what do you do? What do yeah. you do? I don't know. Well, let's hope for that for your sakes. Yeah, that would be, awesome. be nice. No, it, it, it is hard to pick what's next. I mean, like I said, we're, that's also why we're playing a lot of stuff live, to see mm-hmm. what we want to play right. a lot as a single. Mm-hmm, totally. Alan Mulder makes this one. Yes. Not you. Not me. Why? Um, but how no, Jason's got something to say? Uh, Chris makes the first two songs. It makes the first two songs. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, Alan, um, I, I've had a couple of really great experiences having third parties mix records that I've produced in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's been a slow, really, really, really slow evolution and process for me to get to the point where I feel like I can do that. But the experiences that I've had with them, um, you know, Dave Sardi mixed Sainthood, the Tegan and Sarah record that Howard Redekop and Jason and I all worked on. And that was awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, our friend John Goodmanson mixed the Lonely Forest record that I did this last year. And I... I I just, you know, we'd never done that for a Death Cab record, and it sort of felt like maybe it was the right time to do it. And mm-hmm. Alan was, um, Alan was my first choice, and I started pestering him and his management, and you know, then we sort of got some label folks to sort of cheerlead the process a little bit, and it turned out he was really into it, and it turned out really, really well. Yeah. yeah. How hard was it to give up control like that? Uh, it, well, I mean, when you prepare for it, it's really not hard to do. Like, mm-hmm. if you get to a point where you're ready to start mixing the record, and then somebody's like, actually, you're not mixing the record, somebody else that, is yeah. mixing it. Like, that's a really hard thing to deal with. Yeah. But, you know, if the band is, like, trying to wrestle that away from you when you, like, sort of, you were expecting it. But, um, I mean, preparing for it and knowing that that was going to happen from the word go made it really easy. And by the time, you know, we, by the time I handed it off to him, I was more than ready to have somebody else 
have put their ears on it and to get somebody else's perspective. Yeah, especially Alan Wilder's of all yeah, people, right? Exactly. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The rest of us, the three of us were jealous that Chris got to go to London and hang out with Alan and hear <laughs> stories and then watch him work. And It's like you got to do some continued education. I did, yeah. yeah. I Back went to school. school. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. 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 We do something called five questions, five quick questions, one mm-hmm. more answers. We've done this before, but but you guys can both answer. Okay. Road or studio? Studio. Studio. Lennon or McCartney? McCartney. Lennon. Most important thing in a song, lyrics, melody, or rhythm? Rhythm. Rhythm. Cool. Uh, a song you've written you're most proud of? Uh... I wrote a song called Sing Again on my solo record that I'm really fond of. Cool. Field manual, for those who don't know. That's true. True yeah. statement. I'm still thinking. That's all right. The song I've written I'm most proud of. I don't have a solo record, so that doesn't really count. How about the <laughs> song I've been a part of that I'm most proud of? Yeah. We Look Like Giants. Nice. Going back. Nothing has, <laughs> nothing has come out in the last three records. No. I, you know, I, I could say... Uh, a whole bunch of stuff on Sainthood too, just because that was such a. Mm-hmm. Like you played on Sainthood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know such that. Cool. A collaborative record, so um, I'm very proud of that record. And Chris playing bass, and it was like a, you know, a rhythm section in a different way. And, and in one word, Death Cab for Cutie. Here. Here. Committed. 